Hi everyone, welcome back to Function Pilates. I'm Vanessa Kelly, founder of Function Pilates located here in Tempe, Arizona. And today I'm actually doing this reformer workout out of one of um, my other studios that I just expanded. It took a few months to do that, so I've been a, a little MIA, but I'm back um, and I'm here to share with you another reformer workout. I am working on a balanced body piece of equipment here, so I will make the necessary spring recommendations to you if you're working on a different model at home. And today's workout is meet me at the reformer. Since it's been a while, I want to go through a flow where we can just take things at ease. So if things have been a little crazy and hectic and you're just trying to find your flow again, this is gonna be the workout so we can just start to slow down and just execute things at a more deliberate pace so we can just find that more internal awareness and going back to some of those Pilates principles. So if there's any props that you see me using in my workouts, I will link that in that Amazon storefront for you. So if there is something that you like, you can, um, these are my recommendations. And if you'd like to expand your continued education in this Pilates journey, then I have some mini online courses that you can take a peek at anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes long. They're very descriptive as I go through each of the material page by page and you have lifetime access to this and it's all self-paced. So you can log in, log out whenever you feel like it. You can do the course and then six months down the line, review it again and process new information. So I'll link that down below if you're ready to take that next step. And for those that are ready to just get started, let's go ahead and begin. Let's go ahead and begin by adjusting our springs for footwork. So I have on two mediums, one heavy and one light spring. Lie yourself down, get comfortable, make sure that the shoulder blocks are not rubbing up against your shoulders and just hang on to the pegs behind you as you just expand open your chest here. Just focus on the breathing. As we take that inhale through the nose, allow those ribs to expand laterally and into your back. And as you exhale, just think of fogging up a mirror, cinching through your waist. Just do that a few times here as you get grounded. And then let's deliberately begin to arch the back and then flatten the back. So we're warming up through the spine here, finding our neutral pelvis position, just rocking carefully back and forth, and then relax it. Let's place our heels on the foot bar about hip distance apart, stretch it out to two straight legs and soften the knees to bend in. So we'll do about 10 repetitions here. Just really finding your own comfortable pace with this, keeping the feet flexed, strong ankles, knees pointing up towards the ceiling, really focusing on shoulders being relaxed away from those ears, the back of your neck staying long, and let's adjust it down to the toes, same about hip distance apart, challenging yourself to keep those heels lifted because we are having, we're creating more distance. So as you apply pressure to each of your toes and your feet, you should feel the strong ability to extend from the backs of the legs, facilitate the movement using your core, using your abdominal muscles, using your back muscles. Finding this extra lift up from your pelvic floor as you utilize the breath come in halfway, just hold. Let's heat up those thighs for a second. You should feel this build above the kneecap. And then stretch it out. Return yourself back in, keep the toes where they're at, just connect the heels, form a V and stretch it out. So we're activating through those inner thighs. We're hugging those heels closely together. And again, with each repetition, we're very active and energetic through the legs. So it's not floppy, it's not being dictated by the legs. Again, this movement is facilitated from our core. So really find that mind-body experience and connection. Keep breathing. And then halfway in, let's go ahead and butterfly the legs. So knees pull together and they float out. About five here. Again, just to heat up through those legs and stretch out returning back home. And then let's adjust our heels to the foot bar in a wide stance. Knees are in line with the shoulders. It's just a slight external rotation at the hip joint. And again, it's so important to keep those ankles nice and anchored. 
that the feet are not teeter-tottering back and forth, that there's this sense of groundness through the bottom of your heels. And just starting to focus on how those back of the legs really work as a team with the front of the legs. Come in halfway, let's add those small pulses. Very small, tiny, deliberate pulses. Again, activating the quad right above the knee and return back in. So same stance, just drop it down to your toes again. Elevate those heels to reinforce nice strong ankles. Scooping through the belly. You should be able to hear your breath. And just really quieting your mind here as you tune in to what your body is feeling. Arms are nice and long, or they can rest on your belly as well. But if focus on the distance here as you press long and then come in halfway, we're gonna drop the heels under the foot bar and then float them back up again. Drop and lift, drop and lift. And maybe you'll notice that one calf feels a little tighter than the other here. And then as you lift on that last one, push out and return home. Let's return back to that hip distance apart position and press. So we're going under with both heels and then just stretching one at a time for just a moment before we get into some calf raises. And then really thinking about dropping those heels under, lifting the heels up, dropping them under and lifting them up. Good. The, articula the articulation comes from lifting those heels, working through the toes. And maybe you need to ground one hip more than the other. Head into prances here, or running, I should say. Nice, slow pace in our running. But going back to what I was saying is we want to feel this sense of like pressing the hips downward, especially if you feel like there's a joint that's cracking or just slipping and then slide it back in again. Beautiful. Hug those knees in. We're going to go to an abdominal series here. So legs to tabletop, hands above the knees, find flexion, stretch those arms up behind you. We're going into double leg stretch. So we simultaneously reach the arms behind us, frame the ears, extend the legs, circle the arms wide as we bring our hands over the knees. Good. We're staying lifted, eyesight toward the belly button. About five repetitions there, right into single leg stretch. So stay curled up. If you need to take a break, by all means, go for it. But focus on the energy just floating out through those toes here. How much higher can you get your chest lifting the shoulder blades off the carriage? Beautiful. About five each way. Extend the left leg and switch into our hamstring pull. Beautiful. Adding some pulses if you like, otherwise just singular scissors here. Shoulders down, chest is still wide. Good. Curl up a little higher. We haven't taken a break yet. Both legs straight to the ceiling, hands behind the head to support the neck, lower and lift. You know your stopping point. So when you lower the legs, it's easy to do that. The hard part is the lift up. So we want to maintain the integrity of our neutral spine, neutral pelvis. So we want to be careful about our boundaries here. Beautiful. Hold it there. We're not done yet. Curl up a little higher. Take those hands behind the head. Lower the legs. Lift it back up. Reach for those legs. Curl up a little higher. Maintain that height. Interlace the hands behind the head. Lower the legs. We curl up again. We've got three more of these. So take it as slow pace as you need to. We don't want to rush through this as though we still, we want to get it over with. I know that, but this is where the work is developed, that intrinsic heat. Okay. Hug the knees in, take a little breather, rock from side to side, and then we'll carefully go ahead and sit ourselves up. We're going to adjust those spring settings. And I want to go down to a really light spring here. So I'm going to go to a medium spring and we're continuing with our abdominal series, but the focus is on control. So yes, it's light, but it means that we need to move slower, more deliberately and efficiently here. So hands in the handles straight up towards the ceiling, 
wrists over the shoulders. Let's find our legs one at a time in the tabletop. Good. Exhale to press those arms straight down, floating them up as you inhale. So we don't want to have those wrists pass our shoulders here. So they are like zombie arms. And we're just going to do about five repetitions here until we move into more in an intermediate level. Good. Curl the head and chest up. Can we stay in this flex position and continue with the movement of flexion extension of the arms? Holding that tabletop nice and tight. Can you squeeze those knees together a little more like you're holding onto a $100 bill? Exhale. Keep those eyesight onto your belly button. Good. And then slowly return back down. Now, if you need to take a break by grabbing onto the foot bar again, feel free. Otherwise, continue with me. Legs are in tabletop, arms to a T, and we bring those palms in towards the hips. So about five repetitions with the head flat, and then we'll do about five repetitions curled up in that flex position. So take a deep breath there. Inhale to open, exhale to pull back in. And notice like your tabletop position. It's okay to have your heels a little higher. It may not be your ideal tabletop today, but it's safer on your low back and your neutral spine. Good. Take it down. Extend out that right leg for me, and we're going to add in some circles with the arms. So we're conditioning those shoulders by challenging our neutral spine as we hold our right leg out. So you're going to feel the work of the lower portion of your abdominals here. Float it up and down, float it up and down. Beautiful. Reaching long through that leg as we hold our arms steady. That's it. Getting that nice tiny burn and bring it back in. Extend out that left leg here. Hold it there. We're going to go into our circles again. So we open wide to a T, float it back up. Just think of conditioning the shoulders, like I said. Good. Finding that tabletop, strong with that right leg, long with the left leg. Beautiful job. Go ahead and lower and lift. Four. Good. Stretch it long. Three. And two. Good. Last time. Perfect. And let's go ahead and bring it back in. Hold those arms straight down, floating above the carriage. And then we're going to add a little tricep press here. So you're, again, not going to feel the arms so much. Simultaneously stretch arms and legs at the same time. Or you can always hold tabletop. That's always an option too. But like I said, the arms aren't going to feel a lot of this because we're on that medium spring. But that wasn't the objective for this series. The objective was to get more into the abdominal region. So as we curl up, hold that flex position, straight arms, straight legs, energize out through the fingertips, out through the toes, relax your jaw, relax your forehead, shoulders away from those ears, curl up a little higher. There you go. And then rest and come back down. Find that foot bar, take a little breather, put those handles back on again. Do a little stretch if you need to. You know your body. And then we'll carefully go ahead and sit back up. So I'm going to change out the handles to my loops. But if you already have loops, then go ahead and um, you can just stay as is. And then I'm going to add on a light spring, which for balanced body, I have now a red and a blue spring on. Then go ahead and find yourself back down flat on your back. And then carefully, one foot at a time goes into the loop, find tension, and then bring the other leg up, find tension. Beautiful. So from here, we're just going to go ahead and begin to point through those toes, and I'm going to go right into some circles. So drop the legs down here, and then stretch them apart, return straight towards the ceiling. So the goal is to have your tailbone grounded and heavy. Even though it may feel really nice to bring the legs closer towards your chest, but that's not what our purpose is here for today. We're mobilizing through those hip joints. Good. So holding here at the top, lower the legs, 
and then we're going to just lift straight up. Now I want you to think about pressing through the back side of the legs. So you're developing more of this heat from the glutes into the hamstrings as you lead the way to lower. And see if that makes a difference. And then return back up. So let's reverse our circle now. So take the legs apart and stretch them up. Go out wide, circle around, bring the legs up. We're creating more mobility again through the hips, some synovial fluid. And even if you wanna challenge yourself here, I would even look at your legs. Are you opening them equally? And then we're gonna hold here, open and close the legs like the heels are sliding across the table. We're on the same plane, same line. Beautiful. Open, activate those inner thighs. Just feel like the heels are magnets back together. They're drawing this heat, this companionship back together. And then bend the right knee, stretch the left leg. Go out to 45, bend the left knee, and continue. It's almost like you're walking up the wall in a sense. And I like to flex my feet here just because I feel like I can have more sense of connection with this particular exercise. Plus, it also helps to stay put with the, with the loops. Keep breathing. Check in with your upper body. How's the neck and shoulders doing? And then soles of the feet together. Knees are wide. And we're just going to go ahead and make this Ferris wheel. Now, how big your Ferris wheel is is totally up to you. But the whole purpose is that we are strengthening through the inner thighs. And this is all about hip strengthening. So every single exercise we're doing here is all about creating more stability through the pelvis and strong hips. Of course, those inner thighs are going to feel it. Reverse when you're ready. Keep those heels and toes connected. This is a challenge in itself. So see how you're feeling with this. Good arms are long. Take it into that Buddha stretch. Relax for a second. Headrest is going to go down when you're ready, if it's not already there. Again, just wiggle off the shoulder blocks so you have some room. We're going to go into a short spine variation. So heels together, toes apart, extend out to 45. Let's bring it in slow. So I want you to not intentionally lift your hips up, but come into the stopper. Now, with power, we lift up. Bend both knees into parallel. Push up again. Now, frog it. Lower the spine, articulate one vertebra at a time here. Tailbone reconnects to the carriage. Exhale to two straight legs. Slow, slow, slow. Can we come into the carriage before piking the hips up? Beautiful. Now we bend for two times. Press, get long like you're reaching an opposition here. Lengthening out through the spine. Frog it. Scoop the belly, articulate with control. Those abdominals are playing a huge part here. And then press out. Good, let's try that again. So come in slow. Then we peel the hips and spine off. Bend in for three. Reach long. Good, trying to keep the carriage quiet. That's the tricky part. Two. And one. Frog it here, heels together, toes apart, bend the knees, lower it down like a string of pearls, one vertebra at a time, tailbone is the last thing to touch, and exhale. Good. Let's bring our feet out, find that foot bar right away, hang those up, and we're going to go into a little full body work here. So we're still... Um, we're going to drop it down to a red spring. So just stretch out those hips, stretch out the back, the shoulders. So as you're sitting, holding onto the foot bar here, and just maybe thread underneath the armpit and just kind of feel where those kinks are at that you may need to stretch out. Think of your torso being parallel to the springs. And then when you're ready, we can sit ourselves up. So carefully go ahead and come all the way up. And we're going to head into up stretch one, which is again, a full body exercise. And in this position, a 
deeper stretch is going to occur as we have one foot on the shoulder block, one foot in front. So it's almost like a runner's lunge, but we're getting that deep calf muscle to prepare us for a plank. So maybe about three times, three to five times, you want to stretch this out here and then swing your leg around and then pull the knee into the chest as you hold plank and then stretch out behind you. So, and again, three to five repetitions here. Pilates is about building blocks. So again, if you are like, wow, I can only do one today, but then in three months you can do five, that's great progression. That's what's so lovely about it. So switch to the other side when you're ready. Finding that deep calf stretch. So really connecting the sole of the left foot down into the carriage. Trying to stabilize your upper body so we're not really moving the upper body. And then when you're ready, just swinging that leg around you. Good. Pull that knee in. Scoop the belly. Yes. All about pelvic floor here. So think of really like drawing the pelvic floor up like you're holding the flow of urine here. And then carefully hold it at the top. So let's wrap the toes around the edge of the carriage, the top of the carriage. And then just, again, feel this initiation where the heels are pressing downward and we're going into a modified plank because I do want you to feel like you can have your heels pressing into the carriage. So everyone's going to be a little different depending on how tight those calves are. But the goal is to stabilize through the upper body as well. Think of pushing your hands into the foot bar so that we're not winging out through our shoulder blades. This is all about creating that activation through our lat muscles, our back extensors. Good. And then let's go ahead and carefully come back down. We're going to stay in this kneeling position and I'm still in the same spring. I'm still just on that medium spring, but instead of being supported by the shoulder blocks, find yourself about halfway on the carriage. Maybe your feet are just hanging off hands in the loops. And I want to do this chest expansion nice and wide. So this will allow those shoulders to drop down and create space between your shoulder and your ear. And then notice where this work is being activated. So think underneath your armpit, right through the center of your back here, and then flip your palms forward. So same idea, same chest expansion, just a different variation of the hand placement. Chest is wide open. Maybe tuck your tailbone under a little bit. See how that changes the feeling of balance here. And then it makes your abdominals work harder, right? Pressing back. Good. Now we're going to cut through air here. So palms are looking at your body and just slice it back. So this is just a little bit more tricep feeling here. Beautiful. And it's about five for each. So about 15 repetitions total, which you may not feel after this class, but you'll most likely feel it tomorrow. So bend down on your knees if you're if that's an, uh, a capability for you. And then let's take it to a bicep curl, but then lean back. So with this leaning back position, it's going to force you to really pay attention to using your core to maintain this upright position this diagonal position and about 10 repetitions here with the bicep and notice that your elbow is staying just below the shoulder. You're co-contracting with bicep and tricep as if your elbows are resting on top of a table. Use your breath and then return to come back up again. So as we continue to hold on to our loops, we're going to go ahead and have a seated position here and then bend your knees. So the feet are flat up against the headrest. And then we're going to go ahead and tuck that tailbone under to a scoop position. Open your arms wide to a T. So as we open our chest up, notice what's going on with your shoulder placement. The wider you go, the more difficult, the more challenging this is going to be as far as weight is concerned. So if it's too heavy, you're going to notice the shoulders creeping upward. So then your stopping point is going to change. Good. 
And then let's go ahead, return. Let's crisscross those legs. And we're gonna stay on the same spring, interlace those hands, elbows are wide, take that rotation. So as we near the end of our workout here, we're going into some rotation. We're gonna go into some lateral flexion to receive all planes of motion here in Pilates, which was designed that way. So shoulders down, think of these heavy water, uh, water buckets sitting on them. Think of your chest staying open and your elbows just stretching to each side of the room. Good. And then let's decrease the weight here. So I'm gonna go down to a blue, which is a light spring. Take that right arm all the way up, interlace it with the left to make a sun. And then adding your lateral flexion, you're just going to side bend into the well. So dip towards the springs. So things to notice here is putting pressure into the right glute, into the right sits bone to stay grounded. So it's not about how far we can go, right? It's about what muscles are the, how the obliques are being worked and the mobility of the spine in this position. Go ahead and bring it down. So hang that up. Return back to your original spring, that medium or that red. We'll flip ourselves around to do the other side. And you can always modify by sitting on a box or zigzagging your legs a different position. But when you're ready, about eight repetitions here as we rotate. And then things to take note is that the torso, the spine is rotating. It's not just a glance over your shoulder, that would be considered false rotation, and it's not the same benefit to the exercise. So know your limitations, know your range of motion, and it's okay if it's not as, as wide range of motion as it was on the other side. Let's drop it down to our layer spring. Let's take our hand up, interlace, good, find your form, and then when you're ready, we're gonna go ahead and take it over. Beautiful. Just feeling that nice oblique stretch, feeling the obliques working, and noticing how this might feel different. Maybe it's harder, maybe it's easier. But I love that the way that the exercises can really speak about our bodies, or basically it's our body speaking to us, and then return and come back down. Again, about eight repetitions there. If you'd like to do more or less, feel free. And then we're gonna stay on that same light spring, that blue spring, and grab a hold of your box. And we're gonna take it in some back extension. So I'm fine with the foot bar up, if you wanna take your foot bar down, that's okay. But sometimes it's such a great challenge because it's a reminder to keep those legs lifted because we want the activation. So with the thumbs on top of the frame, make sure that they're not inside the frame, they're on top of the wooden frame. You wanna lift your chest up into extension, squeeze through your glutes to protect your low back. And then also this creates energy through the legs as well. But the goal here is to find extension. We're so rarely in this position. We're always flex forward. So this should feel good. And you know your limitations. So maybe you don't want to come up as high. But I do want your eyesight down on the floor because we want good cervical position, good neck positioning here. We don't want to break the neck. It would be a contraindication in this case. Beautiful, just feel it slow. Feel the muscles just move down your back. You could even go lighter on this exercise. And then return to all fours if you can, or you can obviously come down to the floor, but we'll just finish it with some cat cows. So as you ground yourself here, round out through your spine, drop your chin, and then extend. Just notice how this is feeling for you. Do you have more mobility, more flexibility through the spine? Be 
beautiful. Just about three repetitions, three to five. And then carefully step off to the side. And we'll end it with a couple roll downs here, guys. So hip distance apart, standing tall. Let's sweep those arms up, take a dive back, and then go ahead and roll it all the way down. And just take a moment to check in with your body. How is it feeling? Are you closer to the floor? And slowly scoop that belly up, re build the spine here, rolling those shoulders back. One more time. Let's take it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's good to be back. Um, and I really like you to check out some of those uh, mini courses that I've created. I'll link it down below. I'll see you next time.